Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear Imam Hussein TV viewers, we are now in the Sayyid Rukayya School in Karbala. There is a big project here called Global Kindness. With me, Dr. Assistant Mahmoud, he will uh, introduce the project for us. Please. Okay. Thank you. Well, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for uh, coming over here uh, and uh, witnessing our project uh, lively. Uh, this is our day four. Today we are going to be wrapping up. Uh, so you see a lot of activity happening. Um, we have been here, the Global Kindness have been here for the last uh, seven years to Karbala. This year we had Karbala and Najaf as well as Kazmet first time. But Karbala and Najaf uh, has, uh, have been serviced for the last uh, uh, seven years. Um, we bring our own equipment. Uh, Dr. Hussein and his wife, uh, um, they have been uh, instrumental in getting this organized along with a lot of uh, help from other dentists from uh, different parts of the world, uh, mainly from Canada, uh, US, um, England, and uh, Tanzania. Uh, they do this Fisabilila to help the, the children of uh, uh, Karbala, Najaf, and Kazmain. Uh, so let me walk you through to the whole process. Um, as I said- Excuse me, what is the exact uh, service you, you provide here? Uh, we, uh, we provide uh, all kind of uh, services in terms of uh, dental uh, uh, hygiene as well as uh, looking at you know the uh, the state of uh, children's teeth uh, age group from uh, 4 to 12 13 and uh, some of the schools uh, uh, have been visited before so it's a, uh, a question of monitoring how the children have been doing uh, most importantly, you know, uh, providing them with the tools and uh, resources, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and uh, oral hygiene uh, lessons to make sure that they take care of their own teeth uh, so that, you know, it doesn't get any worse. Because some of the children, I guess, uh, lack of uh, awareness, uh, it's a water, it's a lack of hygiene awareness, their teeth have gone so bad that if, uh, if they're not looked after, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the quickest, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, earlier, these uh, teeth will uh, affect the rest of the uh, teeth, and obviously it will have an impact on their, uh, um, you know, on, on, on their personal hygiene. Uh, the other thing is, you know, some of the children have baby teeth, which uh, are growing at the same time as the adult teeth, and it's very much inconvenient for them. Uh, you know, to bite and chew. Uh, these kids uh, have to be taken care of so that the baby tooth can get out of the way so the normal adult teeth can grow properly. Very good. Can you please show us the rest of the project? Yes. Um, okay, to start with, uh, we will take you to the sterilization room. We try and follow the same principles of hygiene and uh, sterilization as we do in Western countries. Uh, although this is a mech work project, it's not the best uh, environment, but we still try and uh, do the best we can so that um, the equipment that is being used are sterilized uh, to the extent possible. Now here we have got uh, Sister uh, Shabnam uh, Hashem. She is uh, supervising this area. When the equipment and instruments are used by the dentist and dental hygienist, um, they are only used once. They are only used once per patient and it goes into the bowl where they have to be recycled or rather sterilized. They come to this room, they're brought here, and usually they are, you know, uh, blood or any stuff is uh, scrubbed off, and then they are uh, soaked in a specially prepared uh, solution, uh, which kills all the bacteria for about 20, 25 minutes, after which they go into this, uh, um, uh, what we call a sterilization oven, where they go in, uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, to, to be properly sterilized with, uh, you know, uh, under um, strict conditions for, uh, for about uh, 25, 30 minutes, after which they are then individually taken. Everyone wears gloves to make sure that, you know, we don't uh, contaminate and they go, they go to the other room where the dent, dental hygienists and assistant prepare the trays for the dentist to use. Each, in each equipment or each piece of instrument is uh, handled carefully and put in a tray before the doctors uh, and dentists use them. If the instrument falls on the ground, uh, it, it cannot be used. So we try and make sure that we separate. And you see the area 
is we're using it maximum, you know, uh, possible here to make sure that you know everything separate as, as clean as possible. And all these people are volunteers. They do a fee sabilera. They pay their own uh, way here, fares, accommodation, lodging, boarding, because uh, you know they're trying to do as much as they can to help the young orphans and the children of uh, uh, of this great country. I know that they are working at least 10 hours a day, even more, just for for free. Th that's right. Well, our day starts early uh, because uh, everything has to be set up. And I'll walk you through the process. But uh, the day doesn't end. And even at the end of the day, we feel that we have, haven't uh, managed to cover as many children as possible. But still, it's uh, worth it. Uh, Looking at this way, that a lot of children have been, uh, um, you know, examined and uh, have been taken care of, and we'll talk about the stat statistics uh, later on. Sister Fatima Benji, the project project manager of the Global Kindness uh, Foundation, I want to ask her about the project they started at the uh, seven years ago. Yes. Uh, please give us more information. Okay, so um, one. Of to start off with, my husband and I always wanted to give back. And one of the things what we wanted to do is we wanted to not only help financially, but we wanted to help physically, like actually go with our hands and play with the kids and do something. And our forte was dental since my husband's a pediatric dentist. And this project got inspired by us coming for Ziara and going and visiting one of the refugee camps. And that's what brought the beginning of this trip. So we started off with just my husband, myself, and two of my boys. And our first year, we treated 100 grade one students. And alhamdulillah, today, we have expanded, and we are doing three camps together, one in Kadameng, one in Karbala, and one in Najaf. And we all set up at an orphan school, and we treat as many kids as possible. And how many people are in your group? This year, we are a group of 45 people. Um, we are about 11 dentists. We've got about five or six trained assistants who help the dentists. And we have others who are being trained. And we've got other people which we need their help for. So some people who do sterilizing, some people help with the supplies, some people help with the packing, some people playing with the kids, some people managing the kids, some people making sure which kids we've treated, some people keeping the records of the kids. So we need all variety of kids. Very good. And can you please roughly let us know that uh, how much is the support, uh, the support of the project financially? Like you said, all our volunteers, they pay their own way. They pay their own airfare and a ground package, which we come up with after discussing, looking at our hotels and transportation. And then the, everything else, Global Kindness Foundation funds it. So it's a self-funded project. And sometimes we do get some donations, but that's very little. So it's basically self-funded. So all the equipment is bought by Global Kindness. All the instruments are bought by Global Kindness. All the medication, everything else is bought by Global Kindness. But Alhamdulillah, there is a lot of support from the community. When we go to the community and we outreach to other dentists, they make sure that they go to the supply companies and ask to get some donations. And a lot of times we do get quite a bit of donations as well. So Alhamdulillah, that's how we it's funded. Uh, how many other projects you have yearly in different countries? So because we are a very small organization and a very a family based, Right now, this year, we have two trips. We try and do at least two trips a year. So this year, alhamdulillah, we are here in Iraq. And inshallah, in August, we are going to go to Kenya, to a city called Mombasa. And that's where we're going to have our next camp for this year. And then the following year, it's still in the planning. So we are planning on inshallah coming back to Iraq, and then perhaps maybe going to India as well. Inshallah. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين هذه المدرسة مدرسة السيدة رقية الأهلية للأيتام تابعة إلى مؤسسة الإمام الرضا عليه السلام برعاية السيد السستاني وهذه المدرسة تقع في محافظة كربلاء منطقة الشبانات البناية تتكون من أربعة طوابق تحتوي على 25 غرفة للدرس 
عدد التلاميذ الآن موجود في 440 تلميذ وتلميذة طابق للبنات وطابق للبنين ملاك موجود للبنات وملاك من المعلمين للأولاد يوجد 15 باص لنقل التلاميذ من كافة أحياء كربلاء إلى المدرسة يبدأ الدوام عند الساعة الثامنة حيث يصل التلاميذ قبل دخولهم إلى المدرسة أي في الممر يكون هناك وجبة بسيطة من الغذاء وهي عبارة عن موز أو كيك أو حليب أو أشياء أخرى كمادة سكرية لأن أغلب التلاميذ يخرج من بيته دون تناول وجبة فطور ولذلك نجهز لهم هذه الوجبة يبدأ الطابور الصباح عند الساعة من 8 إلى 8 وربع بعد ذلك يدخلون الصفوف خمس دروس إلى أن ينتهي عند الساعة الثانية عشرة قبلها عند الساعة العاشرة والعشرين دقيقة يتناول وجبة رئيسية عبارة عن سندويشات برنامج أسبوعي كامل عندنا إضافة إلى الفواكه اللي بنطيهم عند بعد يتهيئون عند الساعة الثانية عشرة لصلاة الجماعة وعند قيام حلول موعد الصلاة تقام صلاة الجماعة للأولاد وللبنين للأولاد وللبنات بعد الدرس الأخير يوجد حصة إضافية تسمى درس الإرشاد وتستغل للتثقيف أو لإكمال الواجب البيتي من ضمن البرامج اللي عندنا هو إضافة إلى الدروس المنهجية التابعة لوزارة التربية هناك درس للقرآن والعقائد يديرها معلم ومعلمة الآن في هذه الأيام يجينا في يأتي للمدرسة كادر طبي ومتطوعين من كندا وبريطانيا و ودول أخرى أمريكا يأتون لفحص أسنان التلاميذ ورعايتهم ومعالجتهم مدة خمسة أيام متوالية الأطباء يعالجون يوميا عشر عشرات الحالات من أس... لرعاية أسنان التلاميذ This room actually is where we have our store, stored uh, the bags where we brought the equipment on that side all the equipment is brought from uh, uh, you know from UK or from North America and some of these you know have it, it takes time to assemble and you know again you know to um, reassemble uh, when we go to the next uh, leg of our trip so it takes a toll and a lot of equipment uh, you know um, have been used uh, over and over again it's not an ideal uh, dental uh, hospital but uh, we try and make the most of it. We have got, uh, you will see in the dental rooms, we got the equipment uh, close to what would be a perfect uh, setting, but ob obviously not a perfect setting. This is also used as our uh, assembly uh, area for the early morning meetings or for breaks, uh, which we hardly have any. Okay. Next, we'll go to the initial uh, uh, area where the children are uh, screened and brought uh, and they're individually examined by the dentists to make sure uh, to seek what the issues are and to find uh, uh, optimal solutions for them. Uh, it could be, you know, uh, just a matter of, you know, one or two uh, fillings uh, or a re-examination of a previous work done that is still stable. In other cases, it could be a major work. It may require extractions. It may require uh, uh, just little cosmetic cleaning. But all in all, every children that screened in uh, by the dentist have been, uh, you know, will be looked at and will be treated. Uh, each child has its own chart, uh, which uh, some of them, as I mentioned, have been seen before. So the chart will tell what was the issue before and whether the children are, are getting better or uh, their teeth are getting worse. Um, and, and so we try and monitor as much as possible. Um, we not only treat the kids of this school, but sometimes we treat the kids of the neighboring school. Our objective here with the Global Kindness Foundation is to treat uh, the children first. Uh, sometimes we have occasions where there is emergency uh, for, uh, in case of teachers or somebody in the neighbor uh, villages, they come and they get treated. But obviously the priority is the children. Uh, here's uh, Dr. Dirani. She, he just finished on one of the patients we just was just brought, and uh, he will explain to you in detail the technical aspect of what was done on that patient. This girl was about six years old. She had one, two, three, three about twelve teeth to be repaired. Yeah, and we gave her about uh, six new crowns on her teeth, so they will last longer. 
and uh, then we put some sealants on the teeth that are little bad so they don't get future they don't get decayed in future so it's more of a pre prevention thing right and she had only two teeth which were really bad so we removed them but apparently she was an excellent girl and uh, we did our best to save her as many teeth as we could inshallah. thank you inshallah here is our, our screening area where they have uh, already children have been screened and already are in the dental uh, uh, room but each uh, um, each child has a chart and you will see maybe you can show you a sample of a chart uh, uh, so if you, if you look at this uh, uh, if you can get a, a, a sample of a chart uh, see, yeah it's a blank chart so each child uh, has its own uh, uh, stats uh, recorded for the previous visit and the next visit um, uh, or if they have been seen before then you will see you know the comparison between previous and uh, current visits it's amazing that most of the doctors here cannot understand Arabic and tell do their best to make relation with the kids and with the parents and that's very true you know we have been very fortunate that we have about uh, uh, three or four volunteers uh, two of them are dentists from Iraq who have uh, not only our dentists but also Arab speaking. One also is from uh, Canada. Uh, he's, you'll see him, you'll meet him later on. He's uh, uh, from, originally from Iraq and uh, he's also volunteering his time and obviously it helps. Plus we've got a couple of other Arabic speaking volunteers um, uh, who help uh, in the translation. Important thing is to un get the children to relax and uh, advise them or inform them what's uh, what the purpose of the visit and what uh, is being done so they are not agitated and uh, things are working out alhamdulillah very well so far here we are in the uh, dental room two where you will see about um, uh, four dentists working on the children this is a normal classroom which has now been used temporarily and this is not a typical dental chair, but uh, it's a uh, second best alternative well, <coughs> where each child is taken care of. Now, with a dentist, normally there's one or two assistants, depending on the, on the severity of the case. So, yeah, this doctor is from uh, Tanzania. There's another doctor, he's from Canada, the, the, the dentist, I should say, he's from Canada. Dr. Arsenen is from Canada, and he's from, uh, from UK. Mm -hmm. yeah. And see, there's a lot of people working together. Now, each, each um, the dentist have access to the, what they call a toolbox, where the, all the equipment is kept. This is where the sterilized uh, instruments are. They bring everything here from uh, from overseas, um, including you know um, those portable units for extraction, for water, and sometimes equipment don't work, so it need to be fixed overnight. But all in all, you know. Do you have a technician to fix it? No, I think it's we've got a couple of people who know how to fix these things, but we don't have formal technician. So. This is the second room. Uh, you will see again it's a mech work room. Uh, there's again four, four dental uh, chairs or dental beds. Uh, again, it's fully equipped uh, with uh, dentists, assistants, number one, number two. And they're all trying to work on the children. Now over there you will see that they, they, uh, one of the patients have just uh, been um, worked on. So now they're doing the sterilization and the sterilization, sterilization is very important because you don't want to uh, create more issues, health issues. So everything is wiped, everything is cleaned uh, and uh, new equipment is brought in. Here we put the equipment that's being used that goes back to the sterilization room. Now here's a um, lady that's, or a young girl that's uh, uh, being worked on by one of the nantes. Here's another doctor, you know, Jaffer, he's uh, working on a young patient. From the Canada. Yeah, hey, Dr. Jaffer is from Canada. Um, uh, Dr. Ola is from UK. Um, and uh, he's from UK, and he's from uh, uh, Dr. Nuran is from uh, New York, New Jersey. 
Yeah. See. So we we, we got we got um, participants from um, uh, various uh, continents, uh, all uh, meaning to give back uh, and feasibly uh, their time and effort. Global Kindness Foundation, by the way, does about two or three trips a year. Uh, Iraq, for sure, they do it once uh, around this time, March, April. But they also been to other countries too, like uh, Cambodia or Peru. Uh, and this year, they are planning to go to Kenya in about in August. So you don't dedicate your services to Muslims? No, it's uh, open to all. Uh, uh, it's for children. Uh, it's for children, um, um, not necessarily orphans, but children who have. Uh, do not have access to the kind of services. And, but obviously it's uh, organized and the organization sometimes takes more than a year to get uh, to find out where the needs are. Uh, it's uh, a lot of work and uh, expenses to get to the location. So we want to make sure that you know, it's everybody benefits with this. Uh, uh, the daily routine. So the children are screened in the in their classes and then uh, you know, who, who needs uh, some work to be done, they'll be brought down you know, in, uh, in a few groups. And with, at the front they get uh, 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 more details put in, uh, historical details, and then they get called in. Now once that work is done in the dental uh, uh, offices or rooms, if I may put it, and uh, the dentist will escort the child back outside where they will uh, uh, be handed back to the teacher or in some cases the parents. Okay. Here is our uh, recovery room, supply room. Respected viewers, we are now with Dr. Ali Akbar. He will uh, tell us what he doing here. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. We are here with Global Kindness Foundation trying to help the orphans in uh, Iraq this is our second visit, second time in uh, Karbala. We have been to Kazamiya before, Kazamain from before for four days. There we did some treatment for the patients and orphans. Now we are here. Tomorrow we are going to Najaf. We're going to see and treat patients there. And we have all orphans and all children. And uh, we see approximately we are about 10 dentists together and uh, we try to see as many as we can and try to do as much as we can. One of the brothers told me about the stats over the wall. Can you give us an explanation about yes, it? Yes, yes. What we do as stats is after a dentist works on the, uh, uh, on the patient and outside we have statistics that we put the numbers, how many patients we saw, how many teeth we treated, or what kind of work we did, like fillings, sealants or endo or stainless steel crowns or whatever so we just put a stage so that we know how many people uh, how many teeth we uh, uh, treated and how many children we treated you are uh, coming to karbala i don't know how many times a year but you dedicate most of your time here in serving children what's the reason behind that we, we just see, we just said that the people, are, the kids here, they need the work, they're neglected, they need the, a lot of work to be done. And I, I, I see that it's a great thing that we are doing. And it's helping them a lot. I, I would say that this, this is a great cause that we are trying to help. We are doing it voluntarily on our own. And we would like that we get a lot of cooperation from the establishment, the ministries, and other things. That will help us a lot. On this table, you will see all the sterilized equipment all sorted out. Uh, that is picked up by the dental assistants to prepare their trays for the dentists. Um, when the children are uh, have had their uh, uh, work done, uh, when they're ready to leave, they, get, they come here, they get their oral hygiene uh, Equip, you know, supplies, uh, toothbrush and uh, toothpaste um, and they also get a gift uh, you know for a job well done. Or well Can you show us what is inside the package? Okay we'll show you. Uh, um, Siddiqa can you uh, give one uh, bag? Can, yeah, for, uh, 
we got them in different different age groups. So one of these bags will have a toothpaste and a toothbrush, right? Yeah. What age group? What age group would that be? It was, yeah. Okay. So this is. Yeah, this is for a small child. Okay, so they get one of these. Most of this uh, stuff uh, have been donated by suppliers. Some of them have been bought by volunteers or people who have given money for benefit of children. Um, and then uh, for, uh, for gifts, we have this. You know, the uh, toys, toys, hmm? um, or these ones for some of the children. You provide every single patient with a gift. Uh, yeah, everyone gets uh, one of the gifts, a choice of one gift, and obviously the oral hygiene uh, uh, bag, which uh, you know, which they have been um, uh, given instructions how to use and how to make, you know, make sure that they brush their teeth every day to prevent more, uh, uh, to prevent uh, more decays or more problems later on in their lives. Now here on this side, you see one of the young patients um, who, have been, who has been sedated uh, is recovering. And we've got um, uh, Dr. Haider there. Uh, he, he's an anesthesiologist from uh, Toronto. Uh, who monitors closely uh, the health uh, uh, stats for the child. Uh, this child uh, obviously is now getting ready. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we don't let the child leave this room until they are stable enough. We monitor the heartbeats and uh, blood pressures. Uh, to make sure the sedation, sedation has worn off before they are allowed to go and they are stable and able to walk on their own. Uh, and obviously we advise the ch child's uh, guardian, uh, parent or uh, the teacher as to when they'll be able to take some uh, um, soul and drinks or start eating normal food. Normally how long does it take to get uh, patient enough? Uh, up and running. It all depends on the kind of work that has been done. In some cases, the children's teeth have been so bad that they've had two or three extractions uh, and with uh, some uh, uh, sedation, more sedation given. It takes about, you know, maximum of two hours. Uh, of, of uh, Some people, only, some child only needs 30 minutes and they're fully recovered. Now, sedation is normally given when they have... Uh, here's another... Uh, under the young patient, you know, sometimes it's just a, uh, they're scared, but it's not the pain itself. Yeah, so because they have not been to a dentist for for few years, so that's what's uh, frightening for them. We try and calm them down. Okay, but the work has been done. I can see that the team deal with the children very kindly like parents yes now we try you know the, we try and uh, address the issues as if they were our children and of course they are our children but more important we want to make sure that they don't uh, stay with this traumatic experience because they have to be able to be comfortable visiting dentists in the future um, You'll see a little bit of chaos in this room because we are trying to pack today. Today we're only working half day. We have been here full three days. This is our half day and this afternoon we'll be packing everything. Everything we see here will be packed. We bring everything, you know, batteries, uh, gloves, um, you know, all the gifts, uh, um, instruments, uh, all the magic equipment. Everything has to be packed properly so they can be uh, transported properly. And when we go to the next station, Najaf, they'll be, uh, you know, reassembled and uh, uh, rooms will be set up uh, for treating the children in Najaf.